I'm joined now by poet Sarah Sandman. Sarah, thank you so much for being here today. I was telling you that I kind of went down a rabbit hole reading a lot of the things that you edit and write and such good stuff. When did you fall in love with poetry? Oh, well, firstly, thank you for reading all the things. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, when did I fall in love? Probably when I was a teenager, mm. which I think is a cliche, right? Like that everybody always thinks, oh, teenagers are so angsty and so they fall in love. But um, I think it was probably a Dylan Thomas poem, Rage Against the Dying of the Light, that caught my attention and kind of stayed with me. But then it probably wasn't until really um, undergrad college that I started writing more mm. and then came upon really wonderful teachers and poetry became the way that I express myself artistically. What is your biggest inspiration or can you even pinpoint a, a, a single singular inspiration for your work? Mm. Oh gosh um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure um, I think that the the thing that sort of compels me is um, the need to have a voice about my own past mm. and to put that into the world for myself. And I think for me, writing is a way to understand wh who I am um, in the past and in the here and now. Um, so that's me as a as a poet. I think I probably function similarly with my students because I think they're very, they need to understand who they are. That's that's why they're in a creative writing classroom, mm. or it's a gen ed credit. But <laughs> either way, um, hopefully they come <laughs> out with a with more than just a credit. They get they do have some better understanding. Yes. What is the most challenging part of taking those experiences and and putting them on paper? Yeah, that's a good question. So. Um, I think the most challenging part is to understand that your experience is yours alone and you have to translate it into imagery so your reader can understand. Mm. And and it really is, especially with poetry, it's really about sound and image. And so if, if you're just sort of like ranting to the world or, or whatever, um, your reader won't understand. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's really hard for my students to grapple with mm -hmm. initially. I feel like that would be really hard for me, which is why I can write in a journal all day long, but yeah. there's certainly a difference. So yeah. at what point did you realize that you had a talent for taking what to most people would just be catharsis and, and making it art? I think sometimes I still question if I have that talent, mm -hmm. but I think it's probably external validation. Mm. So having professors who were saying, oh, yes, this works. And then also in reading, the more poets that I read or read when I was younger, the more I realized, OK, I want to do that. And I think one of the things with, with poetry, um, one of the practices is imitation. And so you find the poets who you love and you imitate them. And it's, it's, it's a flattery thing mm. if you're the poet. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think I, I learned that way okay, maybe I can do this. One of the things that interested me so much about you was um, your desire to sort of uh, create a platform for other writers. Mm -hmm. um, tell me about your work as a professor and as an editor that really allows people to, um, to put their voice into the world. Mm -hmm. um, so I started the Dandelion Review um, partially out of my own experience, which was I was sending out uh, creative nonfiction, so I was writing essays about myself, and, they, and they're very um, intense. They're about past trauma, and so I would get comments back from editors, and they would say, this work is beautiful, but it's not right for us. Mm. Mm -hmm. And it kept happening and it kept happening. And so I was thinking to myself, how many people, how many writers are out there that are like me, that are um, writing about past traumas or writing about um, uh, experiences being a woman that gets sort of pushed into a corner and mainstream publishing doesn't want to publish? Sure. Or what about all the people who I know who are writers who are also on the LGBTQ spectrum who are writing about issues that happen to them because of their identity? Mm -hmm. And when they send out their work, again, it gets pushed aside. And so I, I kept thinking, we need more publications that only accept 
uh, a certain demographic. And so I decided, well, why not? I can do this. Mm. Um, and it was also catapulted by a friend of mine who was sending out a, a chat book, which is a, a small book um and it, and it kept getting you know rejected and and she was writing about sexuality and being a woman and and subjects that people don't always like to um read about in mainstream hmm. and so i said i'm going to publish your book and i'm going to start this press and we're going to do this thing and so the dandelion review uh, was born in 2016 and we accept um work from women and people on the LGBTQ spectrum, um, poetry, creative nonfiction, and the platform really is that I want to hear the stories that you need to tell. Mm. Um, so I guess that's the answer for Dandelion Review. Yeah. Um, and then as a professor, I think one of my um, models has always been to be a safe place to hear what my students have to say. I want to go back to the Dandelion Review. Um, as I was reading um, some of the beautiful nonfiction last night, um, it kept occurring to me that these are such personal stories, but they are written so accessibly. Yeah. Um, what do you learn about yourself um, as, as a writer, as a human, um, as you are editing this work? I think I, I learned a lot about um, being brave, mm. um, first and foremost. And so any writer who submits anything to me is taking this huge step. And if they're writing essays, um, you know, with poetry, you can, you can still hide behind a speaker. You, you never know if the poet is writing about themselves. But in creative nonfiction, right, the writer is making a pact with the reader that this is about me. Mm -hmm. This is about me trying to find truth and make sense of it mm -hmm. for me and for you as the reader. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think I, I, I learn courage every time I read one of those essays and I learn um, what it means to take risks and why we keep doing our art, right? Like, so every time I, I get an influx of submissions, I think this is why, this is why you keep doing the work mm -hmm. because all these people need space. It's, it's amazing to, to think of that vulnerability being turned into something so beautiful. What's next? Obviously, you um, are willing to tackle hard things. Um, yeah. So are you um, on a, a path to to open up any more uh, landscapes for <laughs> for yourself creatively or for others? So I think what's next for Dandelion um, is I have another issue coming out. So we have three issues of the literary magazine. So the fourth one will come out in the spring. Um, we just released the our eighth book last night mm -hmm. um, called Brown Daughter by Lee Daniels. Um, and so I think we'll have another book come out in a, probably February, and I'm really excited for this book. Um, I think it's going to be, I'm not sure what the poet will decide, but I think he will be talking some about what it means to be um, a trans person mm -hmm. and and that what, it, what does it look like to transition. Um, and so I'm really excited to give that space. Um, I don't know what else. I don't know. Do you feel like all of your work is coming to fruition at the right time. It feels like in, in 2019, 2020, we're finally starting to have these conversations mm -hmm. about gender, um, about sexuality. And so do you feel like you, um, it's, all, it's all happening when it's supposed to? Or are you mad that it didn't happen you know, 20 years ago? Yeah, no, I'm not mad. Um, I, I try not to ever be mad. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm really happy. I think the synchronicity is important, right? Mm -hmm. I think that with art, we find, if, if you're paying attention, you can find the place where it's like, time to slip in here right? and do this piece of art. And then in 10 years, it might look different. Yeah. But I think, um, I think the timing is right for it now. And I also think in this community, um, people are ready. Mm -hmm. There were 50 people at the reading last night. Wow. Um, you know, on a cold Wednesday night in November mm -hmm. in a Midwest city. Yeah. Right? Yes. That is typically labeled conservative. And I like to say, actually, I don't know. There's tons of people that come out to these dandelion readings and they're so loving and they buy the books and they want to be there. Mm -hmm. So the timing is right. 
would you have ever imagined when you were in high school starting to express yourself through poetry that this would have been your trajectory? No. No, I, I had no idea what I was going to do. I thought I was going to be an elementary ed teacher, yeah. which is important and wonderful. Sure. But my vision was that I was going to be with like, you know, eight year olds. Um, and so being a college professor, doing this stuff with books, um, even my own work, I never imagined it. Do you feel a sense of pride in everything you have accomplished? I. I do. I'm, I'm really grateful for the people who help me, who continue to support me. Um, pride is maybe not where I live very often, but I have to admit last night with the readers um, and the book release, I was, I was proud of what we had, had accomplished. And I'm sort of the, the spearhead of it all, but I have people who help me along the way and they're very important to the process. Mm. If you had to give one piece of advice, and I'm sure that you do often uh, yeah, as, yeah. as a professor, but if you had to give one piece of advice to yourself as that teenager, what would you tell her? It gets better. Mm. Oh, I love that. I love that. And I hope that others read the Dandelion Review because you. that you come away with that. Um, it gets better. It gets better. Thank you so much, Sarah. Thank I, you. I love your work. I appreciate it. And I'm so glad you sat down with me today. Thank you. Arts in Focus on PBS Fort Wayne is funded in part by the Our Foundation and the Community Foundation of Greater Fort Wayne.